is here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. We have, every couple of years, a very, very big announcement about the Reagan Foundation Library, when our book signing will be. I also give a speech, or we have a talk there, we have a dinner there, it's an all-day function, it's fabulous. And at the bottom of this hour, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll bring on the new president and CEO of the Reagan Foundational Library, David Trulio. Uh, David Trulio. And David Trulio is going to give the specifics, including the link where you can go. And I just want to give you a heads up. If you're thinking about going to the Reagan Library for our event in October, um, you really need to get ready. The link isn't working. It's not going to be turned on until 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, they, that's when it'll be announced, what the link is. Uh, the event will be October 21st on a Saturday. He'll announce the time. He'll talk about what we do there. But you're going to need to be prepared because in 22 minutes, we'll make the announcement. The link will literally be flooded and we have sold out on that event because it's a significant event. It's not held often. It involves a fabulous dinner, a conversation we'll have with questions and so forth about the book, Democrat Party Hates America, as well as a book signing. And I sign books until all the books are signed. That is, everybody's happy. And so I want to strongly encourage you folks, get ready. This is an exciting day. Uh, we've sold out. One year it was in seven minutes. Another year it was in 35 minutes. Uh, because there's people not just in California, but of course in California, but all over the West Coast who, who want to get involved. We have people who actually fly in from the East Coast. Some people fly in from other countries. Uh, and they make a trip around it. So that's how big this is. It's a big deal. And uh, we look very much forward to it. Don't forget also, Saturday, September 23, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey. They're ready for us. The next day, Sunday, September 24, 1 to 5 p.m., our friends at Barnes & Noble, Tyson's Corner Mall, and that's the Tyson's Corner Center in McLean, Virginia. And that's it. We won't be doing any more, those three. That's it. I think that's the fewest we've ever done, but it's the nature of the beast these days. My God, do I have a lot to talk about here. First of all, there's some breaking news involving Christopher Ray and the FBI. The man is a liar. He tries to deceive the American people. He doesn't answer 
straightforward questions. He puts out propaganda. He is a cover-up artist for the violations of law and practices and traditions that the FBI is now involved in. He's a cover-up artist for the Biden crime family. And he's, he's promoted by his friend Chris Christie, who knew him when Ray was head of the criminal division in the Bush administration. And it was Christie who recommended Ray to be director of the FBI. What a disaster and a disgrace. Washington Examiner reports, Ashley Oliver, a controversial document issued by the FBI Richmond field office in January, taking aim at certain traditionalist Catholics, tied in FBI offices in Portland and Los Angeles, according to a less redacted version of the document. All right, let me explain this. First of all, wouldn't you think a Catholic president would want to get to the bottom of this? Joe Biden is Catholic in name only. We have Jews who are Jewish in name only. And you can go down the list. Joe Biden supports the most radical approach to abortion in American history and the history of any free country. Abortion on demand paid for by the taxpayers. Abortions in the military paid for by the taxpayers, that is, to travel. This isn't... You know, upholding Roe v. Wade, this is upholding murder. Infanticide is murder. So what they're saying here is Ray and the FBI really tried to limit this. They, they gave the committee, Jim Jordan's committee, a heavily redacted document. And that document from January basically fingered the Richmond office, the field office of the FBI. That was it. Ray said as soon as he heard about it. He yanked it, he killed it, and rejected it. But now the committee has looked under some of these redactions. And they show that it wasn't just the Richmond field office. It included the FBI offices in Portland, Oregon, and Los Angeles, California. That's three FBI offices. In other words, that's the FBI the version obtained by the Washington Examiner linked so-called radical traditional Catholics. Now, these are Catholics where the mass is often, if not in whole in part, in Latin. And that would include people like Antonin Scalia. He went to a Catholic church where that's the kind of practice they had. But I want you to think about what's taking place here. It's the same Justice Department trying to destroy Donald Trump, trying to destroy the rights of parents, the documents first made headlines this year after it was revealed the Richmond office had assessed that threat presented by the so-called radical traditional Catholics and explored threat mitigation opportunities, such as engaging with certain churches in an attempt to persuade their leadership into working as tripwires or sources for the FBI. So they, they wanted to have uh, monitors, preferably the priests themselves, that is, spies on the parishioners. Espionage against the Catholic Church. Now, when you take that and you put it with the major censorship operation that was going on by the Biden administration and the Democrat Party, and when you see that they're trying to put Donald Trump in jail for the rest of his life in Washington, D.C., and that he shouldn't be allowed to talk about what the judge is doing, an Obama judge, what the prosecutor is doing, an Eric Holder prosecutor, that they want to shut him down. You can see what's happening in our country. Jim Jordan, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, called the new version of the document startling. Said the new information suggests the FBI's use of its law enforcement capabilities to intrude on America's First Amendment rights is more widespread than initially suspected and reveals inconsistencies with your previous testimony before the committee, Jordan wrote in a letter to Ray. I have an entire section on the First Amendment in The Democrat Party Hates America. And what you will learn in that section is that the Democrat Party has never supported free speech. Ever. In fact, what you learn is the Democrat Party has never supported the Bill of Rights, ever. There have been multiple efforts to destroy 
or substantially cripple free speech in this country all from the Democrat Party. They create camouflage through campaign finance laws that they try to pass. They've tried to amend the First Amendment flat out. They try to prosecute people who, who they disagree with, particularly reporters. The Democrat Party rejects the First Amendment, all of it. The religion clauses, too. So the attack on the Catholic Church was more than the Richmond office, just like the attack on the Tea Party was more than the Cincinnati office. The attack on the Tea Party, the current so-called special counsel trying to destroy Donald Trump, was behind that. Now, on Life, Liberty, and Levin this Sunday, we're going to have Alan Dershowitz, and we're going to have Miranda Devine, and they're going to have time to speak. And I want to talk about what I see is a comparison that I did to some extent here, but I want to do it fully and thoroughly. About what happened to Putin's opponent, who now is serving 30 years in federal, excuse me, in Russian prison. And Donald Trump, if he gets the maximum on all these charges, he'll be serving 464 years. We don't know anything about the judge in Putin's judiciary. We know a lot about the judges in Obama and Biden's judiciary. We now know tonight, we learned today, that Judge Howe, Beryl Howe, who was the chief judge, who spent 10 years working by Patrick Leahy's side as chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. She's a radical leftist. She got appointed because that's what the Democrats look for. She was the chief judge of the D.C. District Court. She ruled against Trump 100% of the time. She ruled to take away his attorney-client privilege that all of us get because she was asked to do that by the so-called special counsel. We now know in January she ruled in secret because she didn't want Trump to leave the country. That the special counsel could have secret access to Trump's Twitter account, which of course he doesn't use and hasn't for a long time. But that's beside the point. This is what these judges are doing. This is why you despise them, every damn one of them. This is why you despise the FBI. Look what they do. This is why you despise the Department of Justice. You have the Biden crime family. You have issues of bribery, extortion, obstruction, fraud, RICO on top of fraud, money laundering, wire fraud, FARA violations, including Biden, co-conspirator to violate FARA, and there's not even a criminal investigation taking place. Not even a criminal investigation. You're right to be disgusted, and you're right not to trust any of them. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, we're losing our status in the world, and we're losing our primary status in the world. Joe Biden just agreed to swap prisoners that Iran took Americans for no damn reason at all for Iranian prisoners who are terrorists. And on top of that, he's going to release billions of dollars to the Iranian regime. Billions of dollars to the Iranian regime. There was a story yesterday, I didn't get to it, also leaked by the White House, that Benjamin Netanyahu, who's supposed to be our ally, right? They hate Netanyahu. They love the Islamo-Nazi regime in Tehran. Tells you all you need to know. They tried to humiliate Netanyahu for the thousandth time. That's what Obama, Biden, and other anti-Semites do. Oh, really? Again, you'll read the book and you'll know that both of them are anti-Semites. In fact, the Democrat Party's always been filled with them. Yes, yes, going back to Franklin Roosevelt. Don't believe these phony documentaries on PBS and everywhere else that promote FDR because he was an economic socialist 
who destroyed our constitutional system. What did he say? I said what needed to be said. You'll read all about it. So what Biden is doing is now saying, through leaks, of course, that, uh, that well, yeah, okay, we kind of invited Netanyahu, but he's trying to use it as a, uh, as a banner to promote himself, um, to give um, some kind of justification for the radical right-wingers in his coalition government and so forth and so on. So that's what Biden and his people did today. All right, lots more. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. If we understand, America, that what the Democrat Party is all about is empowering itself, then everything makes sense. Don't get me wrong. Everything is horrendous. But it makes sense that they're the enemy of this republic then. We didn't have permanent political parties when this nation was founded. I mean, during the Revolutionary War, we didn't have any political parties at the national level. And then we, we have our Constitution, and people organize, and they stand for things, and they create a party structure as a practical matter to support like-minded individuals and so forth. But never, ever, could the framers of the Constitution ever imagine that one party would draw people to itself for the purpose of putting the party ahead of the country. So when you can really clearly understand this, then you understand what's going on in this country. Nothing's done for the people. Nothing's done for the betterment of the people. The open borders certainly doesn't help the citizens here, the people of the United States. Bureaucrats running your lives, the degrowth movement destroying energy independence, this doesn't help anybody except the Democrat Party. Not the country. All right, our big announcement's coming up. Get ready, folks. Be by your iPhones. Be by your computers. We'll be right back. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. 
Call in now, 877-381-3811. You know, America, we got that line from a Time Magazine or Newsweek cover in 1976 when Ronald Reagan was challenging Gerald Ford. And they had a picture of Ronald Reagan, and they call, they, the title was The Thunder on the Right. And so I lifted that for the show. And so it's a great honor to have the president and CEO, David Trulio of the Reagan Foundation Library with us. Uh, David, how are you, sir? Mark, I'm doing great, and I'm even better now that I'm on your show. Thank you for having me. Well, you're very kind, and uh, you informed me the other day that you're a regular listener, that we've met, and uh, it sounds like we're going to have a hell of a time, David. So first, I want the audience to know, as soon as you announce the link, people need to act very, very quickly, because once you're sold out, there's nothing we can do about it. So tell them when it is, where it is, and what it is that we do. Mark, we are very excited to welcome you back to the Reagan Library, the place that bears the name of the greatest president of the 20th century. So here are the details. It's going to be on October 21st. The, you, you've been generous uh, in agreeing to, to, to chunk off four hours to do a book signing. There'll be sessions at 1.30, at 2.30, at 3.30, and at 4.30. Then we'll proceed to a, a program where you'll be on stage with me. We will have a conversation about your book, The Democrat Party Hates America. And then when the program concludes, we will roll into dinner under the wings of Air Force One in our Air Force One pavilion. So it's going to be really exciting and uh, strongly encourage people to sign up now. And if you'd like, Mark, I can share that uh, special website Absolutely. or you can. Sure, so go right ahead. Reagan Absolutely, Mark. Thank you. It's reaganfoundation.org slash Levin. So once again, reaganfoundation.org slash Levin. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be tremendous. And look, it's going to sell out. That's a reality. So if people come to this um, after it sells out, they can still uh, attend a signing uh, by, by signing up to, to, to get, you know, get get a book and uh, be in one of those sessions that I mentioned. So what typically happens, folks, is we sell out within the 30 minutes uh, the full program. Most people like the full program because it's fantastic. This is my only West Coast signing. That's it. Uh, and uh, people come from all over the country, all over the world, but particularly west of the Mississippi. And it's a great place to come to the Reagan Library. There's lots to do there. It's very comfortable. It's air-conditioned. Uh, also, it is a, a place where... Uh, you can visit where the Reagans are buried, which is uh, very near and dear to my heart. Very powerful. Very yeah, powerful. Yeah, very powerful. And there's a bench there with a plaque to my own parents as well. But I want to encourage as many of you to come as possible and to act very quickly so you're not disappointed. It really is a great deal. You'll be there all day. We'll start our signings. You can actually go to the library in the morning and do your thing. Uh, I don't leave till every darn book is signed. And I shake everybody's hand. And everybody who's done this before knows it. Uh, we do it every two years, assuming I can. And uh, we do. And this is sort of sort of like, you know, uh, there's certain animals out there. Every season they, they move from one part of the world to the other part of the world. That's kind of me. That's kind of our support is every two years we take a little trip out to the Reagan Library and then we come back. So, uh and Mark, you've been there seven yeah. times before seven? in connection. Yes, we, I had my staff do a count. You've been very generous. And uh, just to everybody listening, this will sell out. That's, that's what history has taught us. But I encourage everybody to come for the day. Our bar and bistro opens at 1030. It'll close right before you go on stage, Mark. Uh, there's the Reagan Museum. There's the tremendous Auschwitz special exhibit not long ago, not far away. And... Um, you know, you, again, you've been so generous with your time in the past and, and, and on the 21st. So people should go to reaganfoundation.org slash Levin to, uh, to guarantee a spot. It's also on all of our social platforms. If you want to check it out there, you can just hit the link and you're right in. Um, and I would encourage you to do that. Uh, there's, I get people contact me afterwards, David, and they say, oh, I missed it. What can I do? There's nothing I can do. In other words... How many, how many slots do you actually have for the full day? Well, it's, uh, it, there, there, it's quite a number, Mark. We, we go to capacity. We don't want to have any problems with the, uh, the fire marshal. I'm going to say roughly 1,000, uh, but you know, don't quote me on that. But it's, 
I mean, look, we, we fill it up. If we, if we had twice the space, we'd love to have twice the, the members of your audience and folks who want to get to know you better and, and hear, hear about the book. But we, 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 we go right up to the line, but don't cross it. And we're going to have a thorough discussion of the book. Um, and I want to say to you folks, David, at the Reagan Library, it took some guts to do this because the title of the book uh, provokes some people. The Democrat Party hates America. And yet this book is not about politics. This book is about history. This book is about the culture. Politics is important. It's kind of a side issue. It's about what's happening to the country. And, uh, you know, Reagan gave his famous speech in 1964. And in fact, your entire speech series is named after that speech. And that speech a was time considered for choosing. a time for choosing. And it was considered provocative, but it wasn't provocative. It was prescient, wasn't it? It, it was. And look, President Reagan wanted the institution that bears his name to be, as he put it, a dynamic intellectual forum. So guess what? It's OK if people disagree. Uh, it's OK to have policymakers and, and thinkers, thought leaders debate. Uh, that's the kind of place that President Reagan wanted to have. Mm-hmm. I campaigned for Reagan in 76. I campaigned for Reagan in 80. I served in his administration from eight years from a relatively low position to very significant positions. Um, what a fantastic man. I met him several times. I met him in the Oval Office, as nice as can be. He was a very, very intelligent man, wasn't he, David? Very, very well read. Uh, extremely well read, well traveled, thoughtful. He spent many years thinking and honing and doing uh, public speaking that he, that sharpened his thinking and and his 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 delivery. He was a great man, Mark. I'm 49 years old. I was six when he took office or got elected, and 14 when he left office. I feel very lucky that I grew up with Ronald Reagan as a model of what a president was and should be. And you know what's interesting, America, is everybody now says they're a Reaganite. And what's funny, David, is I remember when everybody didn't say that. I mean, he had a fight for the nomination twice. In 1968, his state delegates put him up for it. They blew him out. In uh, 76, we know the story there. The uh, delegates said, wait a minute, we probably should have nominated him. Then in 1980, he still had to duke it out. And when finally he got through that Republican primary process... He won by a massive landslide, right? Popular vote and electoral college vote, like nothing we've seen. Well, look, uh, success in hindsight can can look easy. It was a, it was a tough, hard fight, and there was some heartbreak along the way, as you noted, uh, particularly in '76. Um, but you know, th- thank God that it all came together the way it did. Uh, he, um, you know, he and the people who supported him changed changed the world. And, and uh, changed the way America saw itself and got America, uh, it got its confidence back. So it was, it was very powerful. Well, and there are many applicable to, yeah. lessons today, especially with what's going on today. Oh, yeah, it's pretty brutal. I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you in and around California, this is where we meet. This is where we're going to have our national town hall meeting on October 21st, Saturday beginning at 1.30 p.m. So as many of us as possible should join together. We're going to share conversations. We're going to share some meal, dinner. And uh, David and I are going to have a chat about this book, about the state of America. It's only going to happen in one place, at the Reagan Library, and uh, on the West Coast. And I hope you'll join us. Once more, the link is reaganfoundation.org slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, ReaganFoundation.org slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N. And you can go on any of our social media sites. It's right there. Hit it and get in. Are you able to tell us now how we're doing? I don't mean numbers-wise, but is, does there seem to be interest in this, David? Mark, the, the, the Internet is on fire. And uh, uh, some people have also been calling, but we do encourage people to sign up online. So uh, it's just a question of, of how quickly this is going to sell out. We do want to know. You can tell me later. I, uh, I compete against myself. Uh, you got it. You got it. All right, my friend. Well, thank, thank you, you very Mark. Much. We can't wait to have you. Good luck. Appreciate it very much. God bless. Hi to everybody there. Melissa and the crowd. Take care. All right, folks. There you have it. It's a secret no more. 
It's a secret no more. We're very excited about this. I'll travel there with my wife, Julie, and uh, other family members, I'm supposing. But we will definitely be there. We're going to go out there for one purpose, to see you. And then we'll come back east. Uh, So we'll have this in October. And another reminder, September 23rd, Saturday, bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey. That'll start at 10 a.m. And then the next day, Sunday, September 24th, we'll have Barnes & Noble, Tyson's Corner, McLean, Virginia, 1 p.m. But for west of the Mississippi, this is it. If you want to join us. And, and what's fantastic about this, I'm going to tell you something. It's, it's a huge memory. People make friends while they're waiting. And we have a hell of a good time. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. So this, uh, this punk prosecutor goes by the name of Jack Smith. You know all about him if you've been listening to this show. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he, uh, he wants to have a trial on his so-called January 6 charges, which have nothing to do really with January 6. He wants to have the trial in January. Special counsel Jack Smith, reports Fox, proposed to begin former... President Donald Trump's trial in January 2024. This is right before the Iowa caucuses. What's a trial that could go on for six or eight weeks? What he wants is a guilty verdict on at least one count. In his view, hopefully all four. With the D.C. Democrat Party. Biden supporting. Jury. Now that creates all kinds of havoc, you see. Havoc for Trump, obviously. Havoc for his supporters. The donors will start to dry up. It'll be said, you don't want to elect a man who's been convicted of a crime, do you? And this will be the focus as the Biden crime family skates. Skates. This is what's going on. This is how you know. This is all about making Donald Trump a political prisoner. Listen to me carefully. They want to make him a political prisoner. They want him off the map. And my guess is they'll go after whoever the Republican nominee is, other than a Christie or a Will Hurt, who's not going anywhere, but you get my point. They like those kind of Republicans. The government proposes that trial begin on January 2nd, 2024. Estimates that its case in chief will take no longer than four to six weeks, the filing says. What about defense? Don't they get to defend? I want to remind you. This judge has to rule, probably tomorrow, but soon, on whether Donald Trump gets to talk about his case to you while he's running for president. In fact, while the DOJ and this man, his office, Smith, is leaking to Maggie Haberman. Now, what's interesting is when I tell you that they've leaked to the New York Times and Maggie Haberman, I get no pushback from any quarter because that's exactly what's happening. Trump faces charges, they write, of conspiracy to defraud the United States. That's the first charge that has been used almost exclusively on financial crimes. Conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. That has been used, even though those are the Enron statutes, to really one with a secondary section that they're using. 
uh, had dealt with executives at Enron who destroyed documents and so forth to prevent Congress from getting them. It has nothing to do with obstructing, quote unquote, an election. Obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and conspiracy against rights. That's the 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act. Phony laws. Absolutely phony, these charges. But when you have a Putin-like relationship between the government and the trial judge, a trial judge who was appointed by Obama, who donated to Obama in 2014 and 2015, who worked at the same law firm at the same time that Hunter Biden was an employee of that law firm, you've got a rigged system. A Democrat jury, an Eric Holder prosecutor, and an Obama judge, Mr. Petit. Does it get any worse than that? And four phony charges. Not insurrection. Not conspiracy. Not conspiracy. It's just unbelievable. What's taking place in this country. And then they dare to go in earlier. This was actually Friday night. And demand a gag order. So Trump can't even defend himself. So if they get their way, and the, these judges in D.C. will give it to them, they, perhaps. The First Amendment doesn't apply to Trump. The Fifth Amendment in due process, the destruction of his attorney-client privilege rights, don't apply to Trump. Executive privilege, which an ex-president has typically had, so any conversation he had with any official in his administration can now be used against him. Ask yourself how anybody can be a president of the future who's not Joe Biden. While at the same exact time, nothing's being done to the Bidens. All right, let me remind you. ReaganFoundation.org. The link is hot right now. Slash Levin. ReaganFoundation.org. Slash Levin. I have no idea where the sales are or even if they're sold out. But you better jump in. We're coming to the break right now. ReaganFoundation.org. Slash Levin. L-E-V-I-N. Can't wait to see you. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877 they're almost sold out as I speak to you, America. Those of you who are asking, I'm, I'm mentioning this to the whole country because it's a fantastic event. Now, all of you can't go. In fact, many of you can't go just because of geographic reasons. Mr. Producer, open your microphone. I'm just curious about this because I don't remember. The signing, the discussion, then a meal that often involves a filet or something like how much is this eighty five dollars eighty five dollars that's cheap it's been eighty five dollars ever since i've done it they told me seven times right i've done this this will be the seventh book so this will this is my tenth book so almost from the beginning the price as i understand it's always been the same now here's what they don't want to say When that auditorium is filled to capacity, they will open up other parts of the Reagan Library and put a huge screen there. They're called remote viewing areas. In order to get as many people into that part of the library as they can. Because they really do bend over backwards for us. And we sell out of those too. And you still can get 
in line and sign your book and still have the meal and still do all those things. I'm not going to keep talking about it, but I'll tell you why. They're almost sold out. If you're interested, again, it's reaganfoundation.org slash Levin, reaganfoundation.org slash L-E-V-I-N. I understand when Chris Christie was there, they sold about 300, 320 seats. Nobody told me that. I just counted them when they were sitting there. It's like when Chris Christie was doing a book tour. Remember Mr. Producer and Meet the Press and everything? He was all over the same networks he goes now. And he sold like 2,200 books. And he's the most despised Republican candidate in the field. I understand people have told me that my buddy Hugh Hewitt, who says I call him a rhino because he likes McConnell. That's not why I call you rhino, Hugh. It's because you're a rhino. But I still love you. I've known you forever. Um, that he apparently confronted uh, Christie on this. He didn't get a straight answer. Except Christie did say he's never come on my show, even when he was running against Cornyn for governor. And I'm Mr. Producer. In his first race, when he ran against Cornyn, he was on my show, wasn't he? He'd been the U.S. attorney. We interviewed him. So he was on the show once. But what does that have to do anything? I tell you why he doesn't want to come on the show. Honestly? Because I'd don't, I don't unravel him. He, he doesn't know what to do about me. He's used to these guys who cower, who don't know his record, who don't know what to say, who don't want to get into a wrestling match with him. That I can understand, but I don't mind. That's why. It's why our friend Vivek was very, very hesitant about coming on. It took four different days, seven different times. It wasn't painful. I was very, very respectful to him because he, des- he deserves respect. But I don't know who he is. That's the only problem. And I thought this was an opportunity to find out who he is. We found a little more, not a lot. But there's nothing. I I don't have anything negative to say about the guy. In other words, he's not out there um, trying to destroy the leading candidates. Which is what which is what Christie's doing now. I want to say something else as well. I know. President Trump disagrees with me on this, clearly. Many of you will, too. I like Ron DeSantis a lot. Whether he's at 20% or 30% or 17%, none of that stuff matters to me. Polls are polls. I've known him a very long time. I've actually known him longer than President Trump. I knew him when he decided to run for the House. I didn't know him at the time. He was, I was introduced to him, as was Attorney General Meese, by... By Adam Laxalt. We like Adam Laxalt. Well, he and Adam Laxalt were roommates in the Navy. Or bunkmates, or whatever they call them. And uh, let's see here. Only 200 tickets left of the 1,000 in the main room. And then they will move to the overflow room. There are also plenty of spaces if you don't want to participate in the entire event uh, for just the book signing alone. If you want to come just for the book signing. So just to repeat, they just told me only 200 tickets left of the 1,000 in the main room left to sell. The 300 in the overflow room still available, obviously, because we haven't gone to the overflow room yet. And uh, there are spaces for the book signing only. And that's typically what happens. That is, the main room sells out, then the overflow room is next, and then people come for the book signing. So there you have it. And we'll monitor this till it's all gone, and I'll let you know when it's done. Because it's fun, isn't it? But anyway, back to Ron DeSantis. Despite all the attacks on him, he's been a fantastic governor. We have a home in Florida. I'm talking to you from Florida. This is the best managed big state in America. It's a close call with Texas, which has a hell of a problem on its hands. A hell of a problem on its hands. The Democrats have worked overtime with illegal immigration and so forth to turn 
Texas into a Democrat state, and it's more and more Democrat. When I got out of law school and I worked for Texas Instruments briefly, very briefly, until I went into the Reagan administration, it was a heavily Republican state. The city of Dallas was Republican. The city of Dallas is now Democrat, like virtually every other city. So they have great difficulties there, <clears throat> and I think there was some report, they were very excited, some news platform that said Texas is now a majority-minority state. That is, if you add all minority populations together, they're now larger than white people. The Democrat Party is a racist party. And so they're celebrating this. And if you even mention, look, look what's happened through their own reporters and so forth. Look what's happened. Good, the bad, the ugly, doesn't matter. They'll say, oh, oh, I see replacement theory. Why do you think Joe Biden has that border open? Every time I say this, of course, the radical left wing Soros commie media get all furious and so forth. Why, why else would the border be open other than they want to turn Texas Democrat and they'll do it at all costs? All costs. Now, you might say, well, these people can't vote. Well, some of them will vote illegally. But even beyond that, people will blame the Republicans in the state for not doing more. They will blame the governor, the lieutenant governor. They will blame the majority House, the majority Senate of Republicans. They'll say, you could have done more. You didn't do more. On your watch, this happened. Everybody's not as engaged as you are or as engaged as I am. They're just not. So the party in power takes the blame. You know who has a hell of a very difficult race? Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz could lose. That's what they've done to Texas. Nobody says in California anymore, <clears throat> the Senate races or the, or the gubernatorial races, you know, the Democrat could lose. We know they won't. We know they won't. But when it comes to Texas, they could get a Democrat governor at one point, they could get a Democrat senator, maybe two. Because the border is wide open, and that's exactly what they want. And when you look at DeSantis, DeSantis has decided, if I allow the radical left Marxist culture to devour the state, there's no turning back, there's no coming back. If I allow our border to be open now and don't push back, don't make a, 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 you know, a fight over this, we'll never come back. If I allow the corporatists in California to control what happens in Florida through Disney or any other corporation, if I allow the teachers unions to control what takes place here, if I allow prosecutors of the Soros kind not the prosecute, and crime goes up, we're going to lose the state of Florida. And so he fires that, that slob prosecutor because she's not doing her job. It has nothing to do with race. She's going around saying it's race. Why, has he fired all prosecutors who are a minority? No, he hasn't. It has nothing to do with race. In fact, you now have black communities, thank God, speaking out. They want the National Guard. They want the crime to stop. They want the killing to stop. Now, this may surprise white liberals. doesn't surprise me. You know, black people want to live, too. You know, black people don't want their kids going to inferior schools. Black people don't want homeless people and addicts. That's it. So, I just point that out. DeSantis has been a hell of a governor. He takes on the culture wars. When they start, he confronts them. Chris Christie is incapable of this. Nikki Haley has demonstrated that she's incapable of this. It's too bad. I don't say this because I get pleasure out of it. I get no pleasure out of this. 
I'm not sure where Tim Scott stands on most of this stuff, to be perfectly honest with you. It was a bad sign when he backed Lisa Murkowski in Alaska. She's not just bad. She's a disaster. And she will not back several other people who are running for the Republican nomination. Think about that. After the people have spoken, she says, I'll do whatever the hell I want. Okay, great. So why would a Republican endorse her when she doesn't conduct herself that way? Anyway, we can go on about this. So I, I'm not going to attack DeSantis. I don't think attacking DeSantis builds up Trump. I really don't. I think Trump has two strong legs to stand on in a, in a hugely successful record as president of the United States. That's what he has. DeSantis has two strong legs and a hugely successful record as the governor of Florida. This one endorsed this one. This one endorsed that one. This one did. I don't care. And this is why they're pretty much number one and two. Number one and a distant number two. And it's been that way. Despite people saying, like Christy, I've overtaken DeSantis in New Hampshire. Gee, did you overtake him in Vermont too? Who cares? Or Vivek. Here you have Trump, who has a record that's outstanding. You have DeSantis, who has a record that's outstanding. You have Vivek, who has no record. It's not a put down. I'm just telling you how my mind works and how I think. Now, if you look at Christie and you just look at his record and you put his character flaws aside, of which there are many, his record sucks. He didn't change the politics in New Jersey. He went right back to Democrats. Why? Because he conducted himself like a Democrat. They had the worst public pension program in America there next to Illinois. They don't fund it. Well, if you're not going to fund it, don't offer it. The cities there are crime-ridden. New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the country. Now, what does that mean? It means per square mile, its population is, is bigger than in any other state in the country. And still, it's only one-third populated, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So, you've got all kinds of crime. You've got all kinds of people trying to get the hell out of there. The property taxes are through the roof. It's got the second or third highest personal income tax. And what do they have to show for it? The schools suck. And the uh, politicians there suck. He can't run on his record. Unless he lies about it, because nobody's really looking at Chris Christie's record. I guarantee you, nobody's really looking at his record because he's a 1%. So he may get up on that stage which will have to be super reinforced, Mr. Producer. He may get up on that stage and just lie about his record. Let the truth catch up. But just one final thing on this. You won't find me trash mouth in DeSantis. I have nothing to trash mouth him for. He helped found the Freedom Caucus in the House when he was there. He's been consistent his entire public career. His entire public career. That's why they hate him. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know a company is looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and a 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk that also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast and make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. 
You know, America, it's hard for me to know sometimes what's going on out there. I don't mean economically and so forth. I mean, if you folks and we are so dispirited that we're not prepared to push back against this revolution with our own counter-revolution, I'm here to tell you a couple things now that should put a smile on your face. There are only 90 seats left at the Reagan Library. This is the second fastest, second fastest um, they've had in my books, which means ever, in terms of filling up the seats. There will remain, of course, spots for people to purchase books and get in line. But in terms of the whole enchilada, what did I say? There were 90 seats, Mr. Producer? 90 seats left, and by now probably less than that. This is the second fastest time, other than the first time I was there. Seven books, they say, I guess 14 years ago. The other times take two hours, maybe three hours. That's number one. Number two, I'm not allowed to relay the information to you, but the pre-orders of the Democrat Party Hates America, so far, as I understand it, are exceeding every single non-fiction book in the country. And it's not even close. Now, why should this get you excited, even if you're not going to the Reagan Library, even if you haven't pre-ordered your book? Because it shows you that we're kicking. We're not in a fetal position. This is the National Town Hall meeting right here. This is the counter-revolution, non-violent, of course. This is the counter-revolution to the Marxist revolution that's taking place. I got a beautiful email from my buddy Brent Bozell, the Media Research Center, Newsbusters. And he says in that email, this is everything you said it is, this book. I'm halfway done. I've handed out a handful of the pre-publication copies. He said it's crucially important, and I want to do whatever I can. And we're getting this from a lot of people. So, keep your chin up. We're going to keep fighting. I'll be right back. You know what company's looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger... Take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and a 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk. That also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast and make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. The Mark Levin Show, live and national at 877-381-3811. By the time I finish talking about one of our great sponsors, the main auditorium at the Reagan Library, dinner and all will be sold out. There are literally 12 seats left out of 1,000. I mean, that is incredible. In the whole country, I just want you to know, how incredible that is, uh, even for the Reagan Library. It's because people do not want to be passive. They don't want to lose their country. And we have these other book signings, too, one in New Jersey and one in Virginia. But whether you come to a book signing or not, you can pre-order the book, The Democrat Party Hates America, and go on Amazon right now while it's 38%. I just rounded off. Well, it's 40% off. You can participate in this because come September 19th, we're all in this together. Sean Hannity's put a full hour aside on his program 
I'm going to put a full Sunday aside and have Pete Hegseth interview me like in the past. I'm on a mission. It's not a matter of stopping what's going on. It's now a matter of saving the country and pushing back. Because the Marxist revolution is here. It's in the form of the Democrat Party. It's everywhere. You can't miss it. It's at the grocery store. It's at the gas pump. It's on the border. It's on your streets. It's in your home. It's in your jobs. It's destroying the Bill of Rights and free speech. It's destroying the Republican Party as an institution. It seeks to put Donald Trump in prison for more prison time, more prison time, than Vladimir Putin has put any one of his political opponents in prison. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. It's really quite shocking. I keep bringing this up because it drives me crazy. The Democrat Party, this prosecutor, I mean, I can't get used to it. They literally want to put Donald Trump in prison for nothing. They think the document case, they know it's not, but they want you to think the document case is the most unbelievably dangerous thing that any president has ever done. It's a lie. It's a flat out lie. Then they apply the Espionage Act that was used by Wilson to put Eugene Debs in prison, a socialist, and 2,000 other political prisoners. So that's what they're doing here. This is what I'm saying. God forbid if Donald Trump is found guilty of one count. He will be a political prisoner. With an Obama judge, an Eric Holder prosecutor, an Obama Biden Attorney General in the Biden regime with a D.C. Democrat Party jury. He never had a chance. You have a better chance in a Putin court in Russia. He certainly won't be on the line for 467 years. I'll think about that. Think about how we'll be viewed around the world. And I know you and me, we will never accept the legitimacy Ever. We will never accept the legitimacy of the federal government, of the FBI, the Department of Justice, ever again. Ever again. It's really quite appalling. I, I and, and what you know what else is really disgusting? You have Republican leaders like Mitch McConnell and the Paul Bearers who stand around him. Republicans who want to be the nominee for president. Former federal judges. Who think this is a good thing, who want it to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, they want it to happen. See, we have these quizlings that the Democrat Party does not. We have these Benedict Arnolds that the Democrat Party does not. You step out of line there, they push you out like Manchin. They want nothing to do with that guy. But this is why they vote. 100% in one direction or another. They're not going to fight over any speaker job like the Republicans fought over McCarthy. That's not going to happen. We had 10 brave, give or take, Republicans in the Senate who voted against McConnell in secret, which means some of those who ran as conservatives and said they wouldn't back McConnell voted for McConnell. But they do it in secret. Everything's done in secret. There's officially... (laughs) There's four tickets left out of a thousand the main ballroom at the Reagan Library. Four left out of a thousand. And it's also official. It's the second fastest sellout ever. Ever. The first being what I told you the first time I did it. You never tried that before. 
This suggests to me that on September 23rd at bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey at 10 a.m., we're going to have a fantastic crowd of patriots. The more the merrier. It suggests to me that Sunday, September 24th at 1 p.m., Barnes & Noble, Tyson's Corner Mall, McLean, Virginia, we're going to have a large number of patriots. And incidentally, we do every time, and it gets no news. Ever. Because they hate us. We're successful. We, as a group, are successful. I'm not talking about money and all that. We're successful. Getting together and organizing. Tea Party, we were part of that movement. The Reagan Revolution, we were part of that movement. The Trump Revolution, we were part of that movement. After a shaky start, you know, people going back and forth, not sure. Trump's shaky start, too. But we pulled our act together. Now everything's on the table. The Democrat Party doesn't want to ever lose. Everything is on the table. Everything. Sure, we have some program directors, general managers, even some people who own stations saying, you know, Mark, you've spent almost two hours on this. And I want them to understand something. I know you better than they do. Because I'm one of you. They're not. I understand you better than they do. Because I'm one of you. They're not. I've been through this right here behind this microphone for 21 years. Most of them have not. Most of them have not. They don't want you to go. They want me. Some do, not most who are smart. Want me to go on the air and just recite news stories. Or have 1,200 guests. That's not what talk radio is supposed to be with a bunch of parrots mimicking each other. At the behest of some executive. That's not how it works. That's not how it works at home. That's not how it works in your place of work, your place of business. That's not how it works on the streets. We have a conversation. When we're talking about meeting somewhere and doing something and that it's important, that matters. Even though millions and millions of people listening cannot participate in these various events, They want to know about them. They want to know what other people are doing. They want their beliefs reinforced. They, you, you want to know that other people are thinking the way you do and feel the way you do. I get it. Some of these people do not. I get it. I can't just sit here and go through 17 stories and have three, four, five, six guests. I can't do it, and I'm not going to do it. I never have. This is the most difficult time slot in radio and TV, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The most difficult. Because you have the family at home, or you're trying to get home. You've got a thousand things to do. The things on TV up against radio. Sometimes it's baseball, sometimes it's hockey, basketball, football season's coming. I get it. I have a family too. And so this format has to be used as a format for discussion. It can't be predictable. Everything can't be paint by the the numbers. That's not the way it's supposed to work. When I was a kid, I used to listen to the greats in talk radio. I really did. Among my favorite, if not my favorite, was Bob Grant. And there were others. Philadelphia hosts. What was then WCAU. Or other hosts. Used to listen to Larry King when Larry King wasn't so political. He had guests come on, but what was unique about him is he'd have one guest for a full hour. It wasn't a conga line. It's very interesting. Or watching TV. 
I used to love firing a line. Not the uh, ditz who does it now. I'm talking about William F. Buckley. I used to love it. Thomas Sowell. By the way, Thomas Sowell will be on this program and on my TV show in the weeks ahead. He's got a fantastic book himself that's coming out. He's an elderly gentleman now. He doesn't want to do anybody else's interview. He just wants to talk to me. We've become friends. And I have enormous respect for him. And so that's what we'll do. Anyway, just explaining how things work. And that we shouldn't be bound in by any any kind of paint by the numbers, and I'm not going to be. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what company's looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and a 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk that also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast and make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Just being kept up to date. So they sell the uh, main the main ballroom first. All 1,000 seats have sold out, so they think they can squeeze another 38 seats in there, Mr. Producer. So they've added 38 seats, uh, and they're down to about 12 on those. And that's the way it works. And I know a lot of people are getting backed up on the link because the link can only handle so much. It's a pretty good link, though. So uh, I would encourage you to uh, to do that if you can, because by the time we come back after the top of the hour, I think most of those seats will be gone, too, in the overflow room. Just a friendly word. And also, um, this federal judge, this Beryl Howell, I want to talk about this when we come back. She did her damage and then retired. I guess she's going off to uh, Panama or something. She's a rotten left wing, Pat Leahy, Obama judge. She found reason to believe that Trump would flee the country from prosecution if he was allowed to know that a secret search warrant she issued at the request of uh, Mr. Smith goes to hell uh, for his Twitter account, uh, if he'd known about it. That he'd flee the country, Mr. Producer? These judges really do belong in the third world. They really belong under Putin. Because they're better than the Putin judges. They are tougher. And uh, largely more grotesque. All right, let's see here, Mr. Producer. Looking, 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 looking. All right, let's do this. How much time do we have left? Let me tell you what's going on in America. My computer's down. I'm on my iPhone. Every link I have, I have to go back and forth on the iPhone. Because we have this, as, uh, uh, we, we, we have this, I don't know, what is it? Antiquated computer, Mr. Dude? What the hell is it? Yes, it's ridiculous. So I, uh, this is what I'm doing. And so you know what? It's going to have to wait till the next, to the next hour. Because I can't get off one computer and onto my iPhone fast enough to find this and that. See? You get to know everything that's going on behind the scenes. Everything. Um, but I want to talk about this judge. This is this judge, Earl Howe, who worked for Pat Leahy. And so we read about this later, right? It's like, well, what's the big deal? That's what most of America is saying. And you know what else is funny? 
people who read the New York Times, the Washington Post, and crap like that, they don't really understand what's going on. Or they watch the Congo line of miscreants, malcontents, and reprobates on the other cable channels. They don't really know what's going on. They're the dunderheads of the world. And so Trump was denied the ability to challenge. To challenge. They didn't subpoena the stuff. They got a search warrant. See what I'm saying? Now this is in January. January. Early on when Smith came to Washington from the Hague, where he'd been, you know, dismissed and going to the Hague. He's there for about four weeks, and he decides, I want to get his Twitter account. So he doesn't ask for it. He doesn't subpoena Twitter. He doesn't ask Trump or ask Twitter. He goes to this judge and gets a search warrant. Now, why does he do it? Because he knows he can. Just bust through the door. Get whatever you want. Deny him attorney-client privilege. Deny him executive privilege. Insists on trials in January. One tr- you realize the other trial in Florida he wanted in December? You're running around from one trial to the next. One trial to the next. Nobody has to put up with that. I'll be back. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post. Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. We have a lot more to get to in an hour, but I want to fill you in. The Reagan Libraries filled me in. The main ballroom, the lecture, the book signing, the dinner, the main ballroom is sold out. They can't add any more chairs there. So when that's sold out, you can still attend the lecture and be part of the dinner. So part of the whole event. So once they fill the main auditorium, which they have, they have a sold tickets to their remote viewing room. And this entitles you to watch the lecture in another room on the Reagan Library campus via live feed and then join everyone in the Air Force One Pavilion for dinner following the lecture. And I will be eating with you. Although, uh, keep a good distance because, you know, when there's food on the table, my elbows fly, Mr. Producer. And so tickets to this 6 p.m. lecture in the remote viewing room, there's only 300 left. So if you want to do that now, jump in. You see what happened to the main room. Now, if you don't want to attend the lecture, you don't want to have dinner, that's okay, too. Because it is a book signing event as well. So you can go on the link, go back to the link, reaganfoundation.org slash Levin. Isn't that it, Mr. Producer? reaganfoundation.org slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N. And uh, the way that works is, so even if you don't have tickets to the lecture, the book signing goes from 1.30 to 5.30 p.m. Um, The books must be purchased through the Reagan Library Museum to receive the signature. People with pre-purchased books will have priority in the book signing line. So at least one of your books has to be purchased at the Reagan Library, as I understand it. Um, So for those of you... Honestly, maybe it's too expensive. Maybe you just not don't have a whole day to put aside or whatever. Come jump some, come meet us. So the the 300 in the overflow, that's it. Probably most of those are going now. But if you want to participate in the book signing, we guarantee that I will sign 1,350 books. We guarantee it. And I try to sign more. But if you get one of these tickets you buy for the book, uh, you're guaranteed that you will not be stopped. There will be no running out of time. And I will see you happily and sign your book happily. Does that all make sense? I hope so. It's all right there if you want to read it yourselves. ReaganFoundation.org slash L-E-V-I-N. President Trump was on with our buddy Eric Bowling on Newsmax. And here's what's amazing. The January 6th committee committed a crime. The Democrats and the Never Trumpers destroyed raw investigative material. They destroyed any information they may have gathered on the lack of security in the building, which goes right to the door of then-Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And I would argue also 
Mitch McConnell at the time. There's, they have no documents that even get into that. Uh, many of the deposition testimony videos are gone. So what they've basically done is destroyed records in violation of federal law and House rules, even though the Republicans coming in, as the majority directed them, to protect all the information. They destroyed it anyway. Hillary Clinton destroys 30,000 emails, even though they're subpoenaed by Congress. They destroy their cell phones, so you can't get into their texts and so forth. She had classification on her server, her server that was in her home. Classified information. Nothing. Her big stupid husband, he had classified information, video information, in his socks drawer. What happened to him? Nothing. So they destroyed things. They covered up things. Things that were subpoenaed by a branch of government. Bill Clinton wasn't charged with any Espionage Act violations. Hillary Clinton wasn't charged with any Espionage Act violations. Nothing. The January 6th committee won't be charged with any crimes. Nothing. Donald Trump didn't destroy anything. And he stands to go to prison for the rest of his life. Here he is, Donald Trump with Eric Bowling on Newsmax. Go ahead. And we did something uh, yesterday, you know, now that we have the subpoena power, because we now have subpoena power, all of a sudden the J6 committee, the unselects, I call them, everything was deleted and destroyed. The documents, everything was deleted and destroyed. Uh, that's a criminal act. So all of that stuff, all of that nonsense you watch for a year and a half go on with all Democrats and two so-called Republicans, but they were worse than any of the Democrats, Kinzinger and Cheney, uh, it's all been deleted and gotten rid of. They deleted it because they didn't want anybody to see it, because the real answers were there, but they didn't want to report it. Uh, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Chris, when you have a, a state media like CNN and MSNBC and the Washington Post and the New York Times and NBC, ABC, CBS, and all the other crap operations out there that pretend to be the free press, even though they've destroyed the free press. Um, you can't rally a significant percentage of the public against what's taking place. In fact, they're propagandists for what's taking place. They're autocrats. You won't hear any criticism of this from Jake Tapper or Wolf Blitzer. And while I'm at it, Wolf Blitzer has this guy Mark Short on. Mark Short. He looks like a prison guard to me. I won't say when and how, but he does. Just being honest. Mark Short's like a bad inner thigh rash. I wouldn't know, but Mr. Producer knows. He goes on with Wolf Blitzer and their 14 viewers to attack General Kellogg. Something to the effect, says Short. Do we have this, Mr. Producer? Cut six, go. I don't want to denigrate anybody who has served our country in uniform in combat. Now, when like somebody Keith says Hatton. that, they intend to denigrate them. That's what snakes do. Go ahead. Uh, but at the same time, I think Keith has just recently boasted that he nominated Mike Pence for the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which I don't so? think is consistent with his comments of him lacking leadership skills. I right, let's also stop there. Let's stop there. Why isn't it? He didn't nominate him after the election. He nominated him well before the election. Isn't that right, Marky? So why are you lying? I was told somebody nominated me, Mr. Producer, and I was blocked. Did you know that? That I was blocked. Hey, gee, I wonder who might have blocked me. You think it was this guy? I think it was MS, a.k.a. Mark Short? I think it was MS. Go ahead staff who stood at their post on January 6th. Unfortunately, oh, his staff he, stood at their post on January 6th. They didn't stand at their post. They were there with the vice president, his staff, working with the vice president when he was there on January 6th. They, they weren't standing on posts 
you know, like armed guards. Go ahead. Keith was at the rally at the time that the United States Secret Service evacuated the vice president. The vice president's national security advisor was down on the rally encouraging people to march on the Capitol. All right, let's stop. Look how he glums all this together. So Keith Kellogg was urging the people who were there to see Trump while the Capitol building was breached to join them? Is that what he's insinuating here? He's a liar. Now, you know he didn't do that. But don't worry, he's not trying to insinuate anything against General Kellogg. He and his entire family have served in the military in very, very courageous ways. Go ahead. I see his post. And, you know, I did bring a receipt tonight because this is an email that I got from Keith on January 6th. I don't know. When I talk about receipts, Mr. Producer, usually I'm buying something and I get a receipt. But here's the key. He brought an email with him. What email did you bring with you, MS? Go ahead. January 6th, in which he said, the president is up in the residence. I recommend you stay on the Hill and finish the Electoral College issue tonight. I responded, that's our plan. And he said, that's not a good plan. That's a great plan. Where did you get that email from, Mark Shore? That's government property. Where did you get that email from, Mark, Mark Short? How many emails do you have? You just kept that one? Let me suggest he didn't keep one. Let me suggest he's got a whole database full of emails, software full of emails that belong to the government. He's not protected by the Presidential Records Act either. But Wolf Blitzer is such a clown and such a fraud. Notice he didn't interrupt them. Obviously, Short called him and said, I'd like to come on, Wolf. Absolutely, let's do it. And didn't follow up with a question. Where did you get that email from? How many emails do you have? What did you do? Search your database of emails you took from the White House? But that's okay because Mark Short, I'm sure, has been testifying on behalf on behalf of the regime during the grand jury. Just my guess. And Mark Short, you're welcome to come on this program anytime, pal. Anytime. You know how to contact us. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. We have with us now, ladies and gentlemen, a very good man, a representative from Florida, Greg Stubbe. Greg Stubbe, how are you feeling since you fell off that roof? We actually were very, very worried about you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel great. Uh, healed in the name of Jesus. I had a, a bad concussion, torn ligaments in my neck. I had a punctured lung and a broken pelvis. And about four months after that, I was playing for the Republicans on the mound, pitching in the congressional baseball game. And so, you did very well, right? Yeah, we won again. Uh, the last three years we've won and uh, almost hit another home run. I hit one out a couple of years ago. This time it like bounced in the warning track and bounced out, but uh, almost hit another one out. Are you pitched, like a I semi-pro think, baseball player or something? Well, I wish. I wish I could. Uh, after the home run hit in Nats Park a couple of years ago, I was hoping I'd get some phone calls from some <laughs> uh, recruiters, but that didn't work out. Well, you're about to do something, something that I agree with 100%. You've had enough of the Biden crime family, and particularly since Nancy Pelosi has lowered the bar on impeachment. Impeachment for Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats was any time they disagreed with you. Um, tell me what you're up to here. Yeah, so let me just back up. I mean, and in that segue is good. I mean, they they impeached Trump for a phone call to a foreign leader. Um, that was their first foray into impeachment since I've been in Congress. And uh, when we got elected, look, Republicans don't work and just operate that way. We want to get the do the investigations, get the information. Um, There's been two impeachment resolutions that have been filed, both on the border, which I 100 percent support. I think he could be impeached alone on the border. But all of these corruption, extortion, bribery, all of the things that through the investigations that multiple House committees have put together, um, I think it's important that the American people see that we're working for them and they're seeing all these facts and evidence. So tomorrow I intend on filing a resolution of impeachment on Joe Biden, on bribery, extortion, obstruction of justice, fraud, 
financial involvement in drugs and prostitution. All of this has come from the information that a variety of different committees, some I serve on, some I don't, um, that have done these investigations. And we just learned recently, um, Comer from the oversight committee said that, you know, it's now $20 million the Biden family has gotten from foreign entities, Ukraine, now uh, a Russian oligarch, um, all these different Chinese Communist Party. And these are crimes that have been committed. And we now have testimony from witnesses. We have financial records. We have individuals who are business partners that just recently last week, uh, Devin Archer testified about his involvement in all of this. So you have Bob Alinsky who testified in his involvement in all this. Eyewitness accounts to what Joe Biden did while he was vice president, leveraging his position to make money for his family. And some of these things were done while he was president, uh, that he was making good on some of these promises. So we've being a lawyer and being a JAG, prior JAG officer, I, I, you know, we take a reasonable approach to these things, do the investigation, and I think it is uh, beyond the time now to file an impeachment resolution and move forward with an impeachment inquiry on Joe Biden. And being a lawyer, I think you have Biden dead to rights in one area in particular. It's Farah. His son committed all these Farah violations, and he was a co-conspirator. That is, he's a co-conspirator to the violation of FARA, which is a felony. And for all the reasons you state, he's sitting there with the phone and 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 the oligarchs. He's meeting the oligarchs. He's flying off to see the oligarchs. He has oligarchs in his office as vice president. He picks up the phone and he makes a call to get rid of one of the prosecutors and on and on and on. So even there, you don't have to prove he took one damn penny other than he greased the skids for his son. And I've been trying to make this point as an old litigator, old chief of staff to an attorney general, that that's low-hanging fruit, Congressman. And I don't care what the media and the rest say, that he is a co-conspirator in the violation of FARA. What do you think? I I agree with you. I should have thrown that in there. I mean, that's that's another one, that there's so many different crimes that have been committed between himself and his family members. And what is beyond the pale is a guy who served in the military and sworn oath to the Constitution, um, you you have people who should be held accountable. And there is a different legal standard for those people with last name Biden than the rest of America. And it should not be that way. And I know we can't prosecute him as a sitting president, but we can sure move forward uh, with an impeachment inquiry on these multiple, multiple crimes that have been committed by him and his family. This is Greg Stubbe you're listening to. You know, Congressman, I think one of the reasons Biden is running is because he has his boy in there as attorney general who won't even open an investigation, let alone a special counsel. And Biden's scared to death that if there's a special counsel, he'll be indicted left and right should he leave office. More with Congressman Stubbe in a moment. Mark Levin, the research arm of conservative media. Call in now, 877-381-3811. We're here with Greg Stubbe, congressman, lawyer, patriot. I want to ask you a few questions, congressman, about the other side of this stuff. You have a judge in Washington, D.C., in this Trumpkin, who donated to Obama who worked at the law firm at the same time that Hunter Biden was at the law firm, who is clearly a Democrat hack. Uh, Her rulings in the other January 6 cases have been harsher than anybody else's. She ruled against Trump on the major executive privilege case because Biden wouldn't assert privilege on behalf of Trump, which then made it possible for this prosecutor to get all kinds of information from people the president of the United States consulted with the vice president, chief of staff, destroying that kind of a relationship. So this court, the jury, which will be made up of Democrats from D.C., the prosecutor who used to work under Eric Holder, the whole goal here then, he wants this trial started on January 2nd, which is really outrageous considering all that the defense has to do. It's clear that they want to violate his due process rights because he can't spend time defending his liberty. And they want to destroy his presidential campaign because he can't do that either. Don't you think his lawyers need to get with it a little bit and maybe file an interlocutory appeal, depending how it goes tomorrow with this judge and her protective order, 
and get this matter to the circuit court if they can. And even though that circuit court's been expanded and packed by Obama and then Harry Reid, and get it to the damn Supreme Court. It's not a sure thing, but it's better than nothing. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that approach. And I think ultimately a lot of these cases will probably end up before the U.S. Supreme Court, which on the facts and the law uh, should be beneficial to President Trump on on just the basis of all of these things. And what you know what this is, if if Trump wasn't polling where he was and he wasn't the number one person to take on Joe Biden and wasn't winning by like 37 points in the primary on the Republican side, none of this would even be happening. Uh, and, and you have the complete weaponization and politicization of the justice system. And it started years and years ago under the Obama administration where you were using the FISA process to spy on the Trump campaign. You were you were utilizing federal security resources secret courts to spy on individuals that that all for political purposes, all based on a dossier. And now because they know they're going to lose again, um, they're, they're going to do whatever they can to bring these cases. And what's interesting is politically is this has done nothing but help the president. Obviously they thought that, that this would president Trump. Let me just interrupt you quickly there. You know, I told the president this polls are, uh, are fleeting. They could drop in five minutes. And they're not aiming at the MAGA Republicans, the 30% of the electorate. They're aiming at the other 70%. And so Correct. the polls within the Republican Party and the base are solid 50%, 56%, depending. But that's not enough to win the general election. So they're going after Trump. They're going after that 70%. They hate the rest of us, we conservatives. That's what they're doing. But regardless of that, they shouldn't get away with this, should they? No, absolutely not. I, I think there's things and there's been a number of members of Congress that have talked about this, uh, defunding Jack Smith's investigation, defunding part of the FBI. That's part of this defunding part of the DOJ. That's the really only legislative tool that we have in the House because we can control, control the purse strings. Uh, the challenge with that is, you know, as you know, we have a Democratic Senate and uh, it'll be hard through the budgetary process. They're probably mm -hmm. not going to take some of those things on. Um, but that's the frustrating part, being a patriot myself, seeing this misjustice that is going on and the weaponization of the DOJ and the FBI and being a member of Congress. And there's not much you can do other than try to defund them, talk about it, bring it out. I think ultimately, like you said in the beginning of this conversation, is this has got to get before the U.S. Supreme Court to move this in the right direction, shut down all this complete corrupt uh, activity that people like Jack Smith are doing, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get beyond this um, and move forward as a country. Do your fellow Republicans, as best as you can tell up there, do your fellow Republicans understand that this is a war, not just on Trump, but the Republican Party, that if they get away with this and there's no consequence, the Democrats will do it over and over again and more? The conservatives definitely do. I don't know what that number is within the conference of 222. Um, it's it's those and and I don't I don't operate this way, but it's those members that are in tougher districts that feel like they have to capitulate to certain things and do certain things. Like when I file this file this impeachment resolution uh, tomorrow, you're not going to see 222 members that are going to co-sponsor it. There's uh, th there's members that try to quote unquote represent their districts the conservatives are there 100 percent um but what's frustrating is you saw what happened when they went after trump for completely egregious things in the impeachment and all the democrats mm -hmm. stuck together you have so much evidence that joe biden and his family have committed federal crimes while mm -hmm. he was vice president acted on it while he was president that is impeachable conduct that is high crimes and misdemeanors and deserves uh, to be removed from office, but it becomes political for some of these people. And I wish they would put their own political um, aspirations aside and do what's best for our country. And and if you succeed, it's an inquiry, right? You don't go right to a vote. I suppose it's an inquiry, no? Yeah. Yeah, it'll go to the Judiciary Committee. The Judiciary Committee will open the impeachment inquiry. Then you're going to have an investigation. It kind of it's similar to a trial. Uh, where both sides get to present evidence and you have a hearing 
Um, and then that will all happen long before it gets to the floor for a vote. So another opportunity, one, investigate further things. And, Ms. and Mr. Comer on the Oversight Committee has now said that he's going to subpoena financial information from Joe Biden himself and Hunter Biden himself because there's a ton of litany of evidence that they basically were using the same bank accounts. So Hunter would get the money and then he would just transfer money to dad or he would pay for stuff for dad. Um, so Comer has made comment that he's going to subpoena some of the records. And I think that's absolutely an appropriate thing to do and use that in the impeachment inquiry as the Judiciary Committee should move forward on that. I understand he's getting no help from the Treasury Department. Is that what you hear? They have to go straight to the banks? Oh, yeah. So, yes. So he's subpoenaing, subpoenaing the, the banks because Treasury, I mean, this is this is the Democrats' playbook. Stall, 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 stall. They did it with Hunter Biden's um, charges so that statute of limitations would toll. They know that there's an election next year in, in November. So if they can stall for as long as humanly possible and not give us the information, force us to go to court, that takes time. Subpoenas take time. Discovery takes time. They know they keep moving the ball down the road, um, and, and they're absolutely doing that as a strategy to protect the president. Mm-hmm. It just amazes me um, what they get away with. But I think in large measure they get away with it because they have this Democrat Party press that is corrupt as hell. That includes yep. many many people who worked on the Hill. And so they know they're going to get covered. The, the Biden stuff is not covered and uh, everything about Trump is covered. About right, no? Yeah, if you, if you talk to people that either don't watch the news or watch mainstream media. They, they, they don't know half of the things that'll be laid out in this impeachment inquiry or in this impeachment resolution uh, of all these facts that have been made apparent to the American people because the mainstream media uh, isn't talking about it. Uh, they'd rather about, they'd rather talk about Trump's indictments, which of course are timed precisely with things that are coming out against uh, president Biden and Hunter Biden and that sort of thing to try to quell the information uh, thankfully, Elon is at Twitter now, but Facebook and Google and all those do the same thing. Uh, it's a conglomeration of the left in social media, the mainstream media, and that run the, the federal government on the administrative side right now that are completely in cahoots for whatever reason to protect the Biden family. Well, I'm glad you're back, uh, Mr. Stubbe. I would also say this. When I read this morning that a federal judge now retired who worked for Patrick Leahy for 10 years and then Obama put her on the court she was the chief judge for the district she rules 100% for the government against Trump and her last ruling was to deny Trump attorney client privilege she did it in secret then she retired and left when I read that in January Smith goes to her Smith goes to her to get a secret search warrant of Trump's Twitter, because there's a former president, for God's sakes, to get a secret search warrant of his Twitter account. And she says, you know what? You're right. He's a flight risk. He's a flight risk. He's going to leave the country. Does that not tell you how corrupt this whole damn thing is? Yep. It, it's beyond the pale. I mean, it's so frustrating uh, being up there and seeing all this and uh, what you can do to try to stop it. Um, and, and ultimately, it's not going to be stopped until President Trump is reelected president and uh, we don't have Joe Biden in the White House anymore. But until then, it's 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 just every day fighting the fight, trying to bring this information before the American people and uh, trying to save this country because we are on a downward spiral because of this administration as it relates to our freedoms and as it relates to the the unequal, the equal uh, justice system that is completely corrupted right now. By the way, with your filing, there, as you point out, there will be an impeachment inquiry. Uh, in both of Trump's impeachments, the second one, there was no inquiry. They just took it right to the uh, hangman's noose. And in the first one, the defense didn't have a real opportunity to defend, to participate in the depositions, to provide you know, exculpatory information, nothing. That's the first time in American history we've conducted impeachments this way. I just wanted to remind you, so when people start attacking you, I think you can at least say, oh, we're going to afford your Biden an opportunity that you didn't afford Trump. At least that's my thinking, Congressman. Yeah, and what's, in, what's fascinating about all of this is not once 
has Joe Biden said that this financial information isn't correct, that Hunter Biden didn't receive this? The White House hasn't sent out a press release saying, oh, no, all of this is false. That financial information is false. These statements from Hunter Biden laptop, like it, they, they haven't actually defended any of this. So it'll be interesting when we do, because we will do it the right way, give them the opportunity to defend themselves, what they actually say to try to rebut financial information, witness testimony and all that. They'll just lie and say, oh, that's not true. But uh, the American people are smarter than that. And I, it's it's uh, beyond time to start this process uh, to to correct some of these wrongs that have happened in our country. And it's a matter of Republicans making the case. Stop being marble mouths. Get out there and explain exactly what's being done to our country and why it affects them. Don't let the Democrats get away with their lies. Congressman, I hope you come back. Greg Stubbe, we're glad you're doing well, my friend. And take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me anytime. All right. God bless. Take care of yourself. Are we all square, Mr. Producer? Oh. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. What I'm trying to do here, and I think tonight demonstrates it's working, is the modern Battle of Yorktown. Obviously, without the military, without the weapons, without the violence, but with ideas, organizing, pushing, word of mouth, word of mouth, that the enemy is not the king of England, the enemy is the Democrat Party in our midst. And this is what we're doing. This book, The Democrat Party Hates America, think of it as a Thomas Paine type book and think of the message as a Paul Revere type message that we are organizing, that we are gathering for a final push, a final push for our republic, a counter-revolution to the counter-revolution. Again, no violence, that's them. But I have to say that over and over again because that's how the left projects itself. If you get a chance, go over to Amazon and grab your copies of the Democrat Party Hates America. It's 40% off. Final words on the Reagan Library because I'm not going to push again. The main ballroom is sold out. The overflow room has 100 seats left. If you want to get in, you need to act quickly. Those of you who want to come and just get a book signed and meet me, half of those books have been sold too, so if you want to get a ticket, you need to act now. I'm just telling you, I'm going to go off air. This show is is delayed in a number of major markets, in a number of major markets, and the rest of the country, particularly on the West Coast, is going to begin hearing about this And people are not going to sit around because on the West Coast, those are the people who are going to go to the Reagan Library for these things. So you've got a jump start on all that. I also want to give a shout out to my buddy John Highbush, who started all this, the former uh, president of the uh, director of the Reagan Library, without whom I would not even be doing this. And a thank you to the current president, David Trulio, and of course, our friend Melissa Giller and all the other folks at the Reagan Library and around the Reagan Library. I want to thank you all. You know, in fact, we've talked a lot about what's being done to Donald Trump. We've talked a lot about what needs to be done to Joe Biden. We've talked a lot about a lot of stuff. In addition to the Reagan Library information. So, I'm all geared up for tomorrow. Where we're going to be focusing 100% what's being done to this country, including Joe Biden's sellout, as I began at the top of the hour, to the Iranians. They're getting $6 billion, America. Do you know what they're going to do with that? I do. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, the freedom fighters in Taiwan and Ukraine and all over the world, and in this country, too. Thank you all. God bless each and every one of you. You're magnificent patriots. 